Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. Good evening, and welcome once again to I've Got a Secret. These photographs behind me belong to our first contestant tonight. He took all of them himself, and they're quite remarkable, as you will soon discover. But before we meet him, let's take some pictures of our panel. We might say, first, there's Betsy Palmer, who's a picture of loveliness. Next, a picture of Bill Cullen, the picture of health. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thanks, Bill. Next, uh, pretty as a picture, Bess Meyerson. And finally, our own talking picture, Henry Morris. <laughs> Now the panel's all set. We'll take a picture of our first contestant. Here he is. Good evening, sir. Uh, would you step over this way because I don't want us to block the uh, pictures of your pictures that we're taking here. Where are you from and what's your name? I'm John J. Lachlan, New York City. John Lachlan from New York City. Now, panel, Mr. Lachlan is a brilliant amateur photographer. And as you can see from this sampling of his pictures, he's very gifted. Now, over the years, he has won close to 50 important prizes, and his photographs have appeared in every important publication in the country. Uh, besides uh, this, there is a remarkable secret connected with the gentleman's work. So, Mr. Lachlan, if you will whisper that secret to me, we'll show the people at home and in our audience here uh, just what it is. With a bird. <laughs> Uh, panel, Mr. Lachlan's secret concerns, of course, his photography. And uh, we'll start the game this time with Henry Morgan. Uh, Mr. Lachlan, does it have anything to do with the kind of equipment you used? No. W well, I, w I think... Um, yes. You could say um, yes or no, um, but yes. mostly yes. There is yeah. equipment. Um, uh, no, no, no. There is no equipment, no. Well, <laughs> no. The answer is yes, Henry. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind that. Anyway, <laughs> now, does the, no, uh, does the secret concern how you took these pictures? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you, um, did you, <laughs> did you use a brownie? Yeah. Yeah. That's the secret. Yeah, we could, uh, you know, sandpaper it a little bit more, but substantially, right, you got it. Right. No, uh, you don't have to. You really was do. This, was, was this the first camera you ever bought? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. More? Right. No, that's good enough. <laughs> that's good enough. I like it fine. <laughs> you know, what's interesting. Uh, during the past year, in just this one country, the United States alone, uh, people have spent $1,899,165,710 on cameras and photographic equipment. But um, what is of more particular interest tonight is that very little of that money came from Mr. Lachlan because all he ever buys is film. The only equipment, as Henry has discovered, that he has used and has ever used to take all of these fabulous pictures, okay. photographs, is this old $1 box camera that he bought in 1919. As you can see here, it, uh, it looks like what it is, a 47-year-old box camera. It's all battered and scarred and held together with tape and everything, but it still works. Have you added any special equipment to it? Any no stuff? special equipment whatsoever. I see. All he uses, I understand, is just a tripod, which tripod is within the rules. Uh, one of the reasons that a tripod is very important, by the way, for you photographers out there, especially the amateurs who don't know this, is that if you want to take a time exposure, you have to have a tripod. Have a tripod. Something right. stands for a tripod. Uh, and Mr. Lachlan is so good that he doesn't have to bother about light meters. He just has been taking pictures so long, he knows about how long to leave the shutter open, which is one way of controlling light. I'd like to show you a remarkable example of one of his uh, time exposures. Mm. 
a prize winner of his uh, taken into the Empire State Building in a rainstorm. Uh, could we, as we maybe put another question or two to Mr. Laughlin, maybe see uh, a little bit more of his pictures there, uh, Paul, especially some of the Lincoln things. I think they're, they're just great. Um, any particular reason, sir, why you like to take uh, Abraham Lincoln pictures? Well, I have the likes of Abraham Lincoln early youth, nine years old. And I, in New York World's Fair, took a first um, honorable mention uh, and was true to Lincoln photograph. <coughs> A moonlight night, a long exposure. That started, started me on my link career throughout the country. Well, it's a, a very remarkable uh, career, and the 50 important prizes that you won certainly testify to that. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us tonight. Nice to have met you. Mr. Locke. Thank you. Bill, they tell me that you like to take pictures roughly how m in money roughly expressed, how much equipment have you bought, photographic equipment? Well, yeah, I don't even know, Steve, but I haven't taken anything that even remotely comes up to this, and I have one room completely devoted to photographic equipment. Mm -hmm. Well, let but that be a lesson to pe <laughs> People move when I take pictures. Blink <laughs> <laughs> their eyes. Everybody. Try Lincoln. Try Lincoln. Try Lincoln. <laughs> well, we'll be, we'll be back again in just a minute. But first, hold still, me. Mason, and we'll be right back. Can we have our next contestants, please? to have you folks with us. Just uh, sit yourselves in there and make yourselves comfortable. And at the same time, tell us your uh, names and where you're from, please. Mr. and Mrs. Lester Twitchell from South Paris, Maine. That's Mr. and Mrs. Twitchell from Maine, panel. And before we <clears throat> proceed, I'd like to explain that congratulations are in order because Mr. and Mrs. Twitchell are in New York right now to celebrate a very sentimental and special occasion, their 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> The 50th, of course, is a sentimental occasion for any couple, but uh, I think maybe the Twitchells are a little more sentimental than most people, because uh, 50 years ago, on the day that she was married, Mrs. Twitchell wrapped up a piece of her wedding cake to keep as a memento, and believe it or not, this is it. It's still hanging around. It's in saran wrap. It's in saran wrap now, but uh, <laughs> of course it's been rewrapped. How did you preserve it all these years? I kept it in a tin box. In a tin box, I see. Well, they're not making cakes like they used to. <laughs> Probably has something to do with it. And if you think that's unbelievable, Mr. Twitchell is observing, observing the happy anniversary in a way that I don't think uh, any of the rest of us could. So, Mr. Twitchell, if you will whisper the uh, details of that secret to me, we'll let the audience at home know what we're talking about. Clue panel concerns something about Mr. Twitchell, and we'll start the game with Betsy this time. Mr. Twitchell, does this have to do with the way you earn your living? No. Does it have to do with uh, anything that you participate in, in home, at mm. home? No. Does it have to do with Mrs. Twitchell? No. You just do this all by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> do you? Most, mostly, I guess. Mostly, you guess? <laughs> Uh, does it involve any other member of your family? No. Do you do much... $20 down. Bill? Is this something, Mr. Twitchell, you've been doing since your marriage or before? No, he, he could have, but uh, it, the fact that it's happening now is what you're going for. Oh, I see. But it, would it be important that he did it before he was married or right no, after his marriage? irrelevant. Is it an athletic thing, Mr. Twitchell? No. <laughs> Artistic. No. Uh, Thought-provoking. <laughs> Maybe, but I doubt it. <laughs> Titillating? <laughs> I'm thinking of classification. You're making that maniac. Uh, is, it, is it melodic in any sense of the word? No. Have I ever done it? Do you think? Have you done it? An interesting question, Bill, which we'll get back to later. Best $40 <laughs> done. Really? Mr. Twitchell, do you have to be in New York to do this? No. 
Uh, is it something that you do indoors? <laughs> Both places. Both places. <laughs> um, is, is it, is it, um, I mean, do you make something when you do this? No. Does it have anything, does it, is it a mental thing rather than a physical thing? No. This is a tough one. Henry, $60 done. Did, did, <coughs> did we, oh boy. Oh, Henry, you're my age, you'll see what my problem is. <coughs> Pardon me. Does it have anything to do with athletics in any way? No. Uh, does it have to do with reading? No. Let, uh, I'll Please. give you a little hint, Henry. Let's get back to things like Thank that wedding cake, cake and that wedding ceremony and that sort of thing. Uh, does it have anything to do with baking? <laughs> <laughs> Not that close to the cake, Henry, but just back to the old wedding and all that. Does it have a... Oh, we forgot a whole thing. You, is it a sentimental thing? Yes. Oh, I wonder, because you said uh, it only has to do with you and not with Mrs. Twitchell. Yes. Are you... Oh, is it yeah, something yeah. that you'd... Help, the what? what? Instead of growing, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just for the heck of it, Henry, when the buzzer hit you right in the mouth, what were you going to say? Um... Bill and I put our three heads together <laughs> and guessed that Mr. Twitchell may be wearing his original wedding suit. Yeah. Yeah. The pockets of which are full of cake crumbs. How do you like that? No, I just want to see if you're listening. Mr. Twitchell, uh, I'm going to spare myself the embarrassment of uh, asking you how you managed to stay in the same physical condition so you could wear the same suit all these years. But did you keep the thing just for sentimental reasons? We did. It's always yeah. your favorite suit, I suppose. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. I see. And uh, how did you preserve this, uh, uh, Mrs. Twitchell? Did you... Oh, in my festos and golf spray. Malt, crystals, and spray, I mm -hmm. see. Uh, well, I know that the uh, gentlemen in the audience, and I suppose ladies too, would like to get a better look at the suit than they can see. Would you go out here and model it for us, uh, Mr. Twitchell? <laughs> It's a good-looking yeah, suit. Right. Good looking. Now, the interesting thing is, you tailors will bear me out. <laughs> My tailor bore me out the other day. Anyway, uh, this is the this has come back now. The same kind of lapel, see, and the two, yeah. you, see the, the two or three button uh, treatment here. Like your suit. I like your suit. <laughs> Mr. Twitchell, do you mind if I ask what you paid for that suit all those years ago? $22.50. $22. And you got into what city? South Paris, Maine. South Paris, Maine. You know what I think is very nice, though? What's that? that Mr. Twitchell hasn't changed shape at all, and that he can still wear it. Most yes. men can't do that. Now, you know, Mr. Uh, Twitchell, Betsy raises an interesting point, uh, and there's one other man that I know of who uh, hasn't had the heart to part with his wedding suit. Bill, would you just stand up and take off your jacket for a moment? <laughs> I, uh... Sorry to shake you up like this. Come on, Bill, get up. Now, with the help of your wife, uh, Bill, we sneaked into your clothes closet last Mine week. Mine hasn't come back yet. <laughs> Remember all that noise in your closet last week? Well, that was us sneaking in there. And uh, we got this suit that you were married in 10 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, just in case you didn't fully appreciate Mr. Twitchell's accomplishment after 50 years of marriage, I'd like yeah. you to witness... <laughs> I'd like you to witness Bill Collins' experience can after I, only 10 can years. Can I pull in my stomach? Pull in your stomach? Uh, make it easy on yourself, That's Bill. Please. What's well, hurt? It hurt. That's it's not, not bad. bad. That's not, not bad. bad. 23 fish. Now relax. <laughs> How much more do you weigh now than you weighed then? Do you remember? Uh, I have a room full of Adrien Dupois. <laughs> you take uh, no, I, about, uh, actually about 15 pounds. That's not bad in 10 years. But it's not here, you see. It's home? No. No. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bill. And thank you so much, Mr. and Mrs. Twitchell. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Many happy new <laughs> Very sweet people indeed. Well, sir, we'll uh, meet our special guest for tonight in just a minute, but here's this message from their sponsor.
Time to meet our special guest for tonight. You'll be seeing her on her own CBS special on March 22nd. It's called Carol Plus Two, the other two being Zero Mistel and Lucille Ball. Great combination. Here is Carol Burnett. <laughs> Carol, you seem to be uh, doing a show called Carol Plus Four. Who, who are the fellas? Introduce us, will you? Yes, I'd like you to meet four students from Columbia University. The first is uh, Richard Teruskin, who is a graduate student and a winner of the Woodrow Wilson Fellowship. And then there is Alan Joyce, a political science major and a senior at Columbia College. And there is Richard Pashley, also a senior majoring in English. And finally, William Heinbach, a pre-med student who, with Alan Joyce, was winner of the Intercollegiate Trivia Contest. Uh -huh. <laughs> the, uh, the mention panel of the trivia contest gives us a hint as to why you brought the fellas along tonight, right? Yes, we're going to challenge the panel here tonight. We're going to have a trivia contest right here on this day. Now, as I understand it, a trivia, a trivia expert would be a fellow who not only knows that Roy Rogers' horse was named Trigger. Oh, that's easy, Easy, yeah. sure. But who would also know the name of Roy Rogers' horse's wife, or... <laughs> 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 not horse's wife, Roy Rogers' wife's horse which is Buttermilk. That's right. That was easy. What's the name of his horse's wife, now that I ask you? <laughs> That's a real trivia. Anyway. <laughs> well, no, uh, you know, the definition of trivia is uh, being able to know all the unimportant facts about, or details and facts about things that nobody in his right mind would care about anyway. Sure. And, uh, well, it is nostalgic and uh, it's These fellows usually... have won the contest That's anyway. Right? Yeah, and it, uh, the uh, trivia usually deals with uh, entertainment, forms of entertainment, all these uh, silly questions and stuff. I understand a couple of guys at Columbia have a book coming out about this uh, Yes, I have their names here. Uh, it's written by Dan Karlinski and Edwin Goodgold. They have a book on uh, trivia coming out in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, we don't want you to panic, panel, <laughs> yes, but panic. Uh, these boys are trivia experts. Yeah, well, However, are, just to make all things well. equal, they're going to cooperate with you on your level. <laughs> <laughs> television. Uh -huh. See, television is what we're talking about. So if you've absorbed all the preliminary trivia here, we'll get on with the contest. Carol, would you read the questions, please? We'll have the game right now. All right, this is for uh, the I've Got a Secret panel. Here's the first question for you, and you answer it as a team, yeah, and you can consult, can consult with each other, but just, just one answer, you know. It's a two-part question, you get five points for each part. Are you ready? You're ready. Okay, it's a simple one, and it, I don't think it'll give me any trouble. Um, on the television program, Father Knows Best, who played Father? No. Yes? Yes. 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 Really? Robert yes. Robert, Robert, Robert Young. Yes. That's right. That's five right. points for you. That's now, uh, part two. On the television program, Make Room for Daddy, who played Daddy? Danny mm -hmm. Thomas. Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas. Danny Thomas. Right. Very good. Ten points. Yeah. No points. Do you remember... Uh, we're ahead, right? You're, right. You're, you're we quit. We're ahead. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> no points on this. Do you remember who played his first wife? Who? Marjorie Lord. No. Oh, all right. I June Lockhart. George Goble. Huh? No, no, Gene Hagen. Okay, this is for the, uh, the <laughs> Columbia boys. Um, here's a two-parter for the trivia boys. Five points for each. Who played Sheena, Queen of the Jungle? Irish McCallum. Oh, very good. What was her real name? Jewish McGillis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost up the game. No, I'm What's the real name, you know? Irish McCalla, that's a good one. Okay, uh, this is for the I've Got a Secret panel. Now, we all know William Bendix originally played the life of Riley on radio. Who played Riley originally when it switched over to television in 1949? William Bendix. Oh, wait a minute, we got a... Con uh, we have to okay. This will surprise you, panel. Five seconds. I'm sorry. I'm They're stuck. Let's go for the boys. Uh, Jackie Gleason. Jackie, Jackie Gleason is right. Yes. Five points. Very good. <laughs> this is for the Columbia boys. Um, who, uh, oh, Pinky Lee was the star of a program called Those Two in 1951. Who was his co-star? Vivian Blaine. Boy, they're marvelous. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> one more. Who was the announcer? Who was the announcer? Bob Williams. Johnny Cannon. Bill Cullen. 
The original, yes, I that. That's how far back I go. Yes. Oh, you were there when the program was called That One. That One? <laughs> <laughs> Those him. I'm sure. Who oh, are? Huh? What's next? This one. Oh, all right, Bob this Williams is for the panel here. Uh, it's a four-parter. Again, five points for each correct answer. Who were the original panel members on I've Got a Secret when it went on the air in 1952? Oh, oh I know, I know. Uh, we don't Laura want to hear Z, it from Laura you. Z. Hobson. Right. Yeah. Is there five points for each name? Uh, Orson yeah. Bean. Mm -hmm. Orson Bean. Louise, hold it, hold it. Louise, hold Louise All Britain. Yes. And Melville Cooper. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Very good. This is for the Columbia boys. Um, you should all know about Howdy Doody, so here's a four-part question on that program. Each part is worth five points. One, what was the name of the clown on Howdy Doody? Clarabelle. Clarabelle. Right. Who was the first man to play that part? Bob Keeshan. Right. He's now Captain Kangaroo. Uh, what was the princess's name? Summer Ball Winter, Winter Spring. Spring. And what was the villain's name? Mr. Bluster. Now, can y'all sing the Howdy Doody song for us? <laughs> <laughs> and Howdy Doody. Another four-parter. Uh, name four actresses who have played Sid Caesar's wife on television after Imogene Coca. Oh, that's Nanette Fabray. Nanette Fabray. One. Bessie Palmer. Two. Bessie Palmer. Um. Five seconds. One me. One Henry more. Morgan. Did you no, do it, Henry? Henry never played that. I was the fifth. Oh. oh, you were the fifth. Uh, Nanette. They're stuck, I guess, Fabry. huh? Yeah. Give up? Okay. Stuck. Let's go to the boys. Janet Blair. Yes. Yeah. Janet Blair. One more. Oh. No, that's for... Oh, Giselle McKenzie. Yes. Uh, yes. Right, one yes. for them. Yes. Yes. All right, you yes. get the point. All right. Good All right. girl. Yes. Here's one for the panel, five points each. Give us the names of four puppets, not counting Kukla and Ollie, who made up the Kukla Patapa. Oh. Kukla Paula. Madam Oglepuss. Madam Oglepuss. Yes. Ah, uh, Beulah, which... Little witch. Um, oh, uh, yes. Rabbit. Oh, what Mr. Dewey Dewey, 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 Dewey. Dewey, Dewey. That's Bill. Dewey, Dewey. 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 Oh, aren't you? Is that? Dolores Dragon. Dolores, Dolores Dragon. Dragon. Oh, Dolores yes. the Dragon. Oliver Dragon. Oliver Dragon. Dragon. Dolores, Dolores, Dolores the Dragon. Dolores Dragon was there too, all right. I just have Dragon. No. Oh, okay. Dolores Dragon. I think because the battle's Dragon right now. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, speaking of drag, you all remember Dragnet. Now, what was Jack Webb's name in this series? This is for the panel. Oh. No, oh, well, they don't get any time. You skip them. Did you remember them last time? You haven't asked them anything. It's not their name. Yeah, it should be their turn. Oh, I have. Oh, well, I'll get a blue card then. Okay. Here's you got a blue. parking ticket. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, who? What was the original name of the Phil Silver show in which he played Sergeant Bilko? You'll never get rich. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Wow. But, um, <laughs> what was the original name of the Loretta Young show? <laughs> Through the open door. The Phyllis Diller show. <laughs> That's a tough one. Anybody know? Anyone no, know? Okay. The Alka Seltzer News, right. <laughs> no, it was called A Letter to Loretta. Uh, yeah. Well, by golly, the uh, panel beat the experts yeah. over here. How do you like that? <laughs> We're running a little behind time, but why don't we just all stay here in the theater till about three in the morning doing this back and forth just so our little hearts burst with glee. <laughs> we'll all be right back after this message. Well, never mind how cheap he is, we're on the air right now. Next week, panel, our special guest will be Robert Morris. What do you think of that? Hello, everybody. Very Yes, sir. I've Got a Secret has been brought to you tonight by... General Foods, makers of Senka coffee, rich flavor yet 97% caffeine free. And Dream Whip, the delicious whipped topping mix from General Foods.
Miss Meyerson's gown by Cameo. Join us tomorrow night when Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion and Judy the Chimpanzee take part in the daring rescue on Doc Tari in color. And Wednesday night, be watching for another exciting story, Lost in Space. That's Doc Tari and Lost in Space for Top Adventure. This is John Cannon.